Hi, so here is the USB to TTL converter, which is connected to my laptop. Instead of buying the super expensive uh, service cable from Vago, which costs 53 euros, I decided to make myself and which usually costs me like 5 euros. I ordered it from Amazon. And this is the device from DSD Tech, as you can see here. And this runs with the Windows 10. It just was just uh, plug and play. I didn't really need to install any drivers. This is the Vago. <laughs> Uh, all the Vago legacy PLC have runs with codices 2 and uh, there is this p 2 ttl converter and the cable goes to the service port of Vago here let's have a closer look how this works I took off the cover so we can see better what's here let's have a look this is uh, from top to bottom 3 volt ground TX RX ground 5 volt in our case we need black blue white red cable which is RX TX 5 volt and ground so let's have a look closer look here this is the vago and from uh, top to bottom the cable colors are black blue white red what is the black one the black one is rx then the blue one is dx and then the white one is 5 volt and then the red one is ground if you connect it this way then in then in, in my case windows 10 it just uh, found it automatically and there shouldn't be an issue and I had a so now we are going to see how to update the firmware of Vago legacy controller 750842 here we are connected to the Vago controller with the in the service port also with the ethernet port but in this case we don't need this one this is our concern because the firmware update we must need this okay and the the power is on we need one software called Vago FPC update and uh, we can download it from Vago website and also what we need is the actual firmware and I got it uh, from Vago and this is the one I have the folder and I got a zip file from Vago unzip it and then here is the firmware here and an instruction document which tells you how to do the update when we run this exe file and it asks do the setup I need to install these uh, firmware files I don't know where exactly they uh, install this one that would be interesting to know and why exactly a firmware in exe file I also don't know uh, this is a bit strange but anyway this is the way for to work with all legacy Vago controllers finish and then uh, the Vago FBC update software instance is already running what we need to do is uh, we need to identify as you just saw that the blink the light blinked a little bit it's connected it's say update not required but we will do it so anyways just to see how to do the update press the update and we continue and yeah and we need to make sure that we don't touch anything during this time like to turn the power off or unplug the controller cable or do something else just don't touch the computer or the hardware anything else we, otherwise we can permanently damage the controller it takes some time you need to be patient So now you can see that it just tells you that update is done what we need to do is okay, select this one select settings and restart So device successfully restarted. We close it, which basically opens the Vago Ethernet setting software. So update is done and we are good to go. So here I am connected to my Vago 750842 with 
two different communication options one is with the ethernet port here and one is with the service port here and this ethernet is connected to the ethernet port of my laptop here and this is as you can see connected to a usb to ttl adapter here let's see how we can search for an ip address of a new device at least when we get a device if it's a used one we need to ask that what could be the range of ip address of this device otherwise it will take a long time to find the ip address and it can be very difficult to if the person sets a very uh, uncommon ip address in my case i was told i, I bought this uh, second hand from one guy told me it's in the range 192 168 2 so at least i know the three subnets so if I put it here, I have the advanced IP scanner open here. Okay, so we know that this is connected 192.168 to, sorry, to, and then from zero to, let's see, dash, maybe 255. Okay, we can delete this one. And and we need to make sure if the Ethernet port of this computer is in the same net or same subnet also or not. Otherwise, we won't find it. So let's see and check. Go to Ethernet, change adapter options, and here is my Ethernet port and properties. IPv4 and OK, I'm in the subnet too. And I have set 55 for this computer okay so let's close this all of this and now i will run a scan uh, this advanced ip scanner software has found my wago and you can compare it with the mac address of the device and uh, it should be the same with what device we have or near in your case what you have and if you have several of those uh, wago with the uh, with the uh, switch you need to compare with the mac address which one exactly you want to connect to and upload program on so here in our case the ip address is 192.168.232 let's write it down here so we can work with this later on 192.168 to 32 okay and we don't need to run the scan anymore i will close this and let's uh, have a look in the other software which is called wago ethernet settings okay so this is another software from wago which we can also used to check the uh, IP address or change the IP address and remember that in case of Wago okay uh, we can in this is this with this old controller uh, we are able to uh, connect with the uh, PLC with the software using the Ethernet cable if we know the IP address and we can upload program and uh, change program everything but if we want to change the IP address of this controller, we in this 750842, we need to have the service uh, port connected with a USB to TTL converter, which I'm connected in this case. Okay, so let's we are open now and let's first I go to settings and communication. First, I will try with Ethernet. Okay, and I have put the this one and I will search device so while but you can see that there is something interesting in this case it's not supported if this not supported mean that we can find it the IP address but we are not uh, allowed to change the IP address with this uh, with this Ethernet port, okay. With this Ethernet port, so let's we have searched, uh, we have found our PLC with the Ethernet, and let's switch to 
serial port com usb this is which is this one i'm connected to the com port of this one okay and in my case this is com1 in your case it could be different okay and so we are connected as you can see silicon labs cp210x usb to uart bridge this is showing the this device here and let's apply it here and it will automatically as you can see it started to blink the red light is on and this is working we have found our wago here we have found our wago is showing the ip address and now if you want to change the ip address we can change it now but i don't want to okay so you can change it now when we are connected with the usb to ttl adapter we can change the ip address okay okay so here's code is 2 is open and we would like to make a simple program and upload it to the Wago controller with source code and then later read the program back let's go and see in the POU here already have a program open what we can do we can close everything and I have a simple program here it's called test.project oh, let's open this and it's just basically something just to upload the program and test it and what we can do is that we can go here project and rebuild all so we can see there is zero error zero warning so we are good to go let's test uh, some settings resources we go here plc configuration this is the hardware settings we have two input cards it shows here as i told you before that we have two input cards input card one and two and each of them has four inputs digital inputs this is what we see here and we can close this one something else also we like to show target settings if you go then we can see from general that I all usually like to have this selected load boot project automatically okay it helps and then also if you go online and then communication parameters here is the communication parameter we have here I would remove this one to make a new one and uh, also remove this one it doesn't make sense okay then just let's make a new one new and let's make put it maybe seven five zero eight four two ethernet and and we press ok and then we go localhost and we know the ip address of this controller 192 dot dot 32. The port number and other parameters remain the same. We don't need to change. So update. Select this one. Check the gateway again. And this is the setting of the gateway. TCP IP. And okay, actually we created another one. We don't need to have this. Okay, and then we just select this one and okay. Let's go and check CMD. Let's ping the our controller ping 192 168.2.32. We are well connected. What I would suggest that in this case, what I would like to do that we are connected both with Ethernet and both with this um, serious service board, and which is not a very good idea. At one instant, when we are programming, better to have only one connection. I will take this one off. Show that we are doing everything with the Ethernet port only and let's go and check we compiled this program already so what we would like to do is uh, online and login download the new program yeah yeah so the program is downloaded to the controller we can see it here and we can go online and run and run the program so we are now connected to the bus coupler with the ethernet cable and we plugged the service port cable off we might make sure that we are only connected with one connection option and we would like to uh, get the program which is already here we assume that the source code 
has been downloaded in the controller and then we want to get the source code back so how do we do that let's see here this is empty the code is 2 is open the file open select the plc it asks me to select the right target in our case is 750842 and this i have already configured before so as you can see the ip address of this control i am 192.168.232 port number transfer protocol debug we don't need to change all any of this anyway just press ok and it uploads the project from here and says that the directory already contains configuration file delete and proceed ok and then we say that yeah uh, there is this folder where actually when we get a program uh, fetch a program from a controller it puts them here there are some files here I would like to yeah, I can overwrite all of them. Yes, all. And yeah, so as you can see, the program is here. All the, the program, the source code was already downloaded into the controller and I was able to get it back. If the programmer hasn't downloaded the source code, we won't be able to get this one. So we need to understand this, that with the, it was already downloaded into the controller. That's why we were able to get it. And now we get the program what we can do maybe we can just go to some location and uh, and then make a new folder and then just fetch fetch from and for zero and for two i just save this program 